Hey, once again, and welcome back to Ancient Ways for Modern Days. My name is Mike Freeman. I am one of the pastors at Valley Christian Fellowship, and today we continue in 1 Timothy chapter 5, continuing to look at some of these texts that deal with how to think about elders, and also some other just uh, important things to think through from a biblical worldview as a follower of Jesus Christ. And so let's go ahead, let's turn to our text today. Our text today is 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 20. 22 through 25. Let's walk through this. I'm just going to take a line by line approach today. And I hope you as a listener are able to pick out what the Lord intends for you to see in this text. And let's walk through it though. The text continues. It says, do not be hasty in laying on of hands, nor take part in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Now, this is in the context of elders. And it says, do not be hasty in laying on of hands. Do not be hasty to appoint someone as an elder. This is a a parallel point that we saw back in chapter 3 where it spoke of a a new convert. A new believer should not be made an elder. They must not be a new uh, believer because they will be puffed up with conceit and fall into the snare of the devil. They'll become prideful. And so the text says, do not be hasty on laying your hands and appointing and approving someone in leadership. There might be someone who's very talented, very charismatic in their in their personalities. They seem to be very wise, but they're they're not tested in their character. Take your time to examine them. It says, keep yourself pure. This is not not uh, taking part in the sins of others, when you approve of someone who is in sin, you, you share in some of that responsibility. Verse 23 says, No longer drink only water, Paul's personal instructions to Timothy, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. Now, once again, this reminds us the scripture warns against drunkenness. You and I, we should not be drunk. That is a sin, yet... It does not prohibit drinking in its entirety. And here, there's a uh, even a a an, uh, a comfort and medicinal purpose that that Paul is suggesting that Timothy have a, a little bit of wine. He doesn't say a lot; he says a little. Let's keep going in our text, though. Verse twenty four says, "The sins of some people are conspicuous, going before them to judgment, but the sins of others appear later." so also good works are conspicuous and even those that are not cannot remain hidden. See, what we have in this text is a description of the reality of the human experience. It says the sins of some people are conspicuous. They're obvious. We can look at some people and we can say, wow, look at what they're doing with their life. They are clearly in rebellion to God. And this says that these sins, they go before them to judgment. But then it says, the sins of others appear later. There are some who it looks like they're living a, an outstanding and upstanding life. They're a great citizen. They're a great Christian, yet they have hidden sin, which will be revealed later. It says, so also good works are conspicuous, and even those that are not cannot remain hidden. Now, this is speaking in one sense about elders, but I want to, I want to pl- apply this to every person. To remind us of this truth that that some people, our sins are very obvious and we must repent of those. But this reminds us that there is a reality that you can be walking in sin. Your sin is not conspicuous. It's inconspicuous. It's hidden. It's not visible. Others don't even have any idea. They'd be surprised to hear about that. But this reminds us that it in fact will appear later. All of our hidden sin and all of our hidden good deeds will be exposed. This is a reminder for us as every believer to not just think about elders and like, let's make sure they don't have anything going on in their life. No, this is turning it back to each of us and saying, let's make sure we are repenting of our sin, that we're not continuing in it. Let's make sure that we're going and and making our sin conspicuous to those who love us and trust us and will show us grace and truth and that will support us and help us so that we do not remain in our sin. Listen, brother or sister, if you have sin and it is hidden, listen, it, it is not something that you should deal with alone. There is support for you in the local church. There is help for you. Reach out to a trusted Christian and find the grace and truth that you need. And then also, finally, let's remember our good deeds. 
Let's remember that we may do things that, that are obvious to others. Oh, what a great job you've done serving people. And that's wonderful. Hopefully our motive is not for the applause of others. But listen, even the things that you and I do that no one else sees, the secret acts of service, the secret acts of generosity and benevolence, the moment when you do things for others or in your church family or in your church community or in your community at large and no one else has any idea, God sees. And even that will be revealed. So this calls us to live a, a kind, the kind of life that knows that we will give an account that knows that we have the grace of Jesus and all of our sin has been forgiven. Listen, those in Christ do not walk in guilt and shame, and yet those in Christ must continually walk away from their sin. This is a reminder to all of us to turn from our sin and to walk in holiness and to walk in good deeds. And this is our ancient way for our modern day.